Please join me in prayer. Gracious and loving God, help us this day to understand and celebrate your dream for the world, to be transformed in Jesus' love, and to use our gifts to make a difference for others. Amen. You know, it's no accident that Christmas comes at the darkest time of the year. I say it's no accident because they didn't actually set the date of Christmas until about the middle of the 4th century. Some people say Constantine did it to kind of co-opt all the pagan religions into the Christian religion. Other people think it was just connected to the solstice celebration. Some of those may be true. But I think when they set Christmas at the darkest time of the year, the true wisdom of that was a spiritual wisdom. Think about darkness for a minute. Certainly in Jesus' time, darkness would have been real darkness. People didn't have house lighting. When it was dark, you would wander through the house of the middle of the night and stub your toe and skin your shin. If you went outside, there were creatures prowling, waiting to take you as prey or perhaps thieves or burglars under the cover of night. And then, of course, there was just the kind of spiritual darkness or the emotional darkness that we, that we feel. Those times when life is difficult, those times when it's hard to find the path forward. Human beings have called those dark times forever. And so whoever decided that Christmas should be in the middle of the darkest days of the year knew what they were doing. Of course, they were just picking up on the Christmas stories themselves that all take place in the dark. Like the story that we have today about the three magi traveling to find the baby Jesus. Their journey begins in the dark when they can look up and see the stars and see a sign. It was like a sign of the direction they needed to go, a sign that something was happening and so they set off toward Jerusalem. There's a more metaphorical kind of darkness when we come to understand that when they showed up in King Herod's palace, they were showing up in the household of a brutal and, and violent man. And there's just the, the darkness, the dark night, in which the light could shine and lead them straight to Jesus. And for those who knew the story, as everyone would when it was put in the middle of the darkest night, there they found the light that had come into the world. They found the infant Jesus. So darkness and Christmas really go together in a deep and spiritual way. And what about this Christmas? The whole world, in a sense, is going through the dark time. We're right in the middle of a dark time. I think I realized this in a new way when I was watching a, a documentary on something about uh, land management in Kenya. And this land was being managed by, uh, by the Maasai, the native peoples. They were managing the land in a sustainable kind of way. And, and it showed a picture of these Maasai gathered, and they were gathered in their traditional garb, beautiful, colorful um, clothing. Except there was one piece that wasn't so traditional, that all of those Maasai were wearing face masks to avoid the coronavirus. And so the darkness of our world spreads to the very edges, the edges of our world. And you and I have been living through this darkness now for many months, and we're in the middle. With the vaccine coming, we can see that there's an end in sight, but we're still really in the middle. And so, like Christians who have celebrated the light coming into the world at this time of the year for millennia, you and I find ourselves in what some say are the darkest days 
of this current chapter of struggle and darkness. And I know for many of us, it's been a spiritual and an emotional darkness as well. For children who've had to totally disrupt their learning ways of learning, for our elders who live in the darkness of isolation and disconnection, for people who go to work in, in new ways, but in their home at the same time, and for those people who can't work anymore because they're unemployed. And of course, for those who have died and their loved ones, as their loved ones die alone and separate. This is a dark time. But there's some wisdom here. Because you see, it's precisely in those dark times. It's precisely when things are disrupted. When things seem like they can't really get too much worse. It's precisely in those times that are the most fertile times for spiritual growth. For looking at our lives and for thinking about ways in which there might be a path forward that's not like the old path, but the new path. That will lead us closer to that place where light and life can be a part of our everyday existence. One of my favorite lines in this story today is that the magi, the, the wise ones, went home by another road. And maybe that's the invitation in this dark time. Not that we would simply go back to normal, but that we might think about that idea of going home by another road. Maybe this year we can take this season of darkness and not just get through it, but think about it as a time to actually grow, this, this time in the darkest days. Perhaps part of that is looking back. Like the wise men, before they started on their journey, they looked up in the stars and they saw signs. Signs of where they needed to go. What if we looked back this year and looked at those little places of light, even in those moments when we said, this really is awful, but I'm glad for this part. For me, some of those moments might be spending more time with my son or connecting with people that I would never see because they live too far away, but I could Zoom them and spend time with them. And then as I look forward, I think to myself, hmm, I wonder if I might do more of that instead of the things I was distracted with before. So looking back to know how to go forward. T.S. Eliot, in his poem, The Journey of the Magi, tells this wonderful long story, a beautiful allegory about going to see the Christ child. And at the end of the story, the end of the poem, I mean, at the end of the poem, he talks about how the wise men, when they got back to their old houses and their old way of living, were so deeply dissatisfied because they had seen the light. And they knew there was something deeper and better and richer. And so maybe this year, instead of making New Year's resolutions, you can take a little New Year's retreat and begin to imagine the other way home. To begin to imagine some new ways that as the light slowly dawns, and it will be a while, as things slowly come back online, you might choose wisely so that the things that give life and light are the things that take priority. I don't know who chose to put Christmas in the darkest time of the year, but in this midwinter darkness that we find ourselves in, I'm grateful that they did. And I'm grateful that this story tonight and the light of Christ 
remind me that there's always an option to take another road home. Happy Epiphany.